and hello again. This time I'd like to explain just a bit, uh, it seems to be a long video, but it's just a bit about how to work with HDR in most of our concorders. Uh, it's a different way to configure them depending on the camera. So I'm going to use, in this case, a, a Z90, which is a very fancy camera, I like it a lot. In FS5 is quite similar, in FS7 is different, but I will, I will tell you about that uh, later. So basically, uh, what is the reason to use a logarithmic gamma curve? In the past, uh, well, in the past, <laughs> uh, unfortunately in, in the present, in, in many countries and in many applications, we are working with the recommendation 709, which is for full HD resolution, and works with a, a gamma curve, which is uh, very, very narrow, let's say, as, as of today. Basically, let's invent a curve which is light here, and here is the output. Output uh, can be referred to sensor output. For instance, if it works at 8 bits depth, it only can, can record up to two, 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 five, six uh, levels, or it can be the codec in your system, or it's a ba basically the bottleneck that you're going to find in your system. And this is, again, the light. So, the maximum light that seven, recommendation 709 allowed to have was 100 nits, or candela per square meter. And that is approximately, there, there are some details about that, but, but let's assume that it is the maximum uh, signal level. So, everything that was below that was uh, clipped, the, the typical white saturated uh, uh, levels in, in your signal. But nowadays, fortunately, the cameras have evolved a lot and they can have much more than the typical seven stops that we had in 709. So now you can easily find uh, cameras with 12, 13, 15 stops and it's uh, something very common in the, in the market with digital sensors. So, but, but it could happen that the output could be the same. We could use, for instance, the same, the same codec as, uh, as we were using, MPEG-2, for instance. So, what we can do is to apply a gamma curve that uses this shape. So, the sensor is not, uh, is not going to work linearly, linearly, sorry, in a linear way, but it's going to compress the highlights. I mean, if you apply double level to the light, it doesn't mean that you are going to go from this level to double level in the output. That logarithm in the gamma, gamma curves are different in each manufacturer. So, for instance, we have the S-log gamma curves for Sony, there are the C-log gamma, uh, C gamma curves for Canon and V-log for, for, Pana, for Panasonic. So, there is a, a typical discussion, which for me it makes no sense, which is which gamma curve is better. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because you cannot apply a C-log gamma curve from Canon to a Sony sensor. So, it is basically the way from each manufacturer to get the best picture quality from their specific sensors. But this means a problem, especially for a customer profile, which is the broadcaster. There was a conversation, well, this is a very summarized uh, history, but BBC was in conversations with NHK from, from Japan, and they agreed uh, to tell us, the manufacturers, Guys, please, we cannot live with 20 different gamma curves. We need to have one standard gamma curve that A is a standard, B is retrocompatible, and C it is not aimed for post-production. And there then the HLG hybrid gamma curve, uh, hybrid log gamma curve appeared or was invented. So why is it hybrid? Because up to 100 nits is exactly the same as 709, but multiplied by 0 0.5 or divided by 2. So it's a matter of normalization. So this means the second uh, requirement, which is retrocompatible, because those systems that were working in SDR, so Full HD, could only use the lower part of the, of the gamma curve, and the HDR equipment can use the whole range of the signal. And third, and it is very important, Typically, the gamma curves from the manufacturers, S-log, C-log, V-log, whatever, are uh, aimed to do a post-production. But the hybrid log gamma is not aimed 
to do post-production. You can do that, but color grading is not something that is the main uh, aim for that. So this is very clear. HLG is not for color grading, despite you can do it, obviously. And inside the HLG, you can choose, for instance, in our case, different tastes of, uh, of HLG. So for instance, I used to recommend the, the by default HLG gamma curve or the HLG3, which provides mm, bigger dynamic range by paying a little bit more noise, but it's something you can you can easily live with, and it's very similar to the default HLG. So I'm going to use now the um, Z90. I will record the menus, and that is something that in this case you can choose through the picture profile button. By pressing it, you can see that you have something like 10 profiles. In fact, if I move among them, you will see that the picture slightly changes, despite it's the same picture. Okay, so let me go into picture profile number 10. And in this picture profile number 10, I can edit. And in the settings, I can choose... Basically, there are two parameters which are mm, critical for that, which is the gamma curve and the color space. Color space is something that is quite related to the gamma curve because it's under the same recommendation, 2020 or 2100, but it is not mandatory to use a, a HDR, so-called um, color space, for using HDR and vice versa. So, for instance, you can work with color space 709 with an HLG gamma curve. That is something that is, is quite normal. It's the same as resolution. You don't need to work with 4K for having HDR. But now let me jump into the HLG part. And here you can see that I can select several gamma curves. And that is one of them that you may have seen already, which is the S-Log3. When I jump into S-Log3, this happens. This is noise. I have seen many, many people talking about FS7, telling that their camera is noisy. That is not so right. What is noisy is the gamma curve. If you read the white paper for slow 3, in the lower part, if you zoom in and zoom in, there is a pedestal, a minimum gain, a minimum ISO. And that is why when people is used to work uh, outdoors and they work very nicely with, the, with the, for instance, the, the slog 3, and then they start shooting indoors, then the noise seems to be to be um, raised. Basically, that noise was there, but in highlights, you couldn't see that so easily, maybe in some shadow or, or something like that on some dark area of the image. But in low lights, it is very uh, easily to, uh, easy to, to, to detect. Why is that? Because the dynamic range that you are using, in that dynamic range, probably you don't need all those 14 stops and you could only live with seven of them. So in that case, I would recommend to work, maybe not with uh, 709, but something like an hypergamma, in order to obtain a gamma curve that really goes into the zero, zero point, and it doesn't find any pedestal. Also, uh, and, and this is like the last point of, of this video, be careful with the monitoring. I'm going to leave it in HLG, okay? But now we are finding another issue, which is the LCD. The LCD is under, in most of the cameras, is under the 709 recommendation. So we are shooting with a camera that can provide HDR, but with an SDR device. So in that case, we need to apply a lookup table. That lookup table can be applied this way. I can jump into the display set, select, I think it's almost the, the last one, uh, yeah, Gamma Display Assist, and here my recommendation is to leave it in ON and to leave it also in AUTO mode. You can select several ways to convert, several gamma curves, but since the, it's the same device as you are acquiring the signal with, it makes sense to leave it in AUTO because the camera knows perfectly which gamma curve it is using. And now you will see here in the lower side of the menu, uh, sorry, of the display, 
Assist HLG 2020. It means that if you are shooting with HLG, it will convert from HLG to 709. It is applying a lookup table. If you are shooting in slot 3, it will convert into 709. So this way you can at least monitor the signal, but obviously you are not going to monitor the whole signal because there is a limit in the highlights and you will get a nice surprise, which is in post-production, maybe you can recover many more levels that were not visible in your LCD, but now you can recover them and for instance you can see much more volume, much more detail in the clouds, for instance, instead of having the typical uh, like carton, plain carton, white uh, paper clouds that everybody is used to, to watch in, in 709. So this is basically the, the tips and the comments I wanted to, to share with you. Nothing more than, than this and hope that this was useful as, as usual and see you in my next video.